All righty, it's 8 a.m., and uh, we will go ahead and get started. Um, welcome and good morning. Uh, my name is Jonathan Koppis, uh, here with Gary Schnicky and Nick Paulson, um, and we are going to talk about the farm programs in the, uh, in, from the new Farm Bill and do some more demonstration and work with the, uh, with the online resources that are available. Um, so we want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. And we will get underway here shortly, mm. or at the moment, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a quick note of introduction. Uh, we want to just say thank you again to all of our uh, coalition partners uh, that have been helping with the development of the online resources as well as the education and outreach that is uh, going on at this point in time. So we appreciate all the help and work that they've put into it. Um, throughout this entire effort, and we'll continue to do so as we, uh, we continue doing outreach and education all the way up through the sign-up. Just also a reminder, uh, if you're looking for the online resources, here are the websites. Uh, the Farm Bill Toolbox, which is housed on the Farm Doc uh, site here at the University of Illinois. Uh, that's where we have got a, a whole host of resources. Just click over there so they can see it oh, over on the area. There's the Farm Bill Toolbox. Um, Again, we go. Th we've got the decision steps and the and the all sorts of assistance here to help out as you sort through this decision, and then of course the uh, the A pass tool. No, you're you're right. There you go. The A pass tool, then the online uh, web calculator, web application that uh, we'll be sh demonstrating through today as well. That uh, is where you can do program calculation estimates. So today we're going to talk in more detail about the decision between Arc County and the price loss uh, coverage program. And so we want to, but first we want to just kind of give this reminder on deadlines. Uh, always remembering the decisions we talk about in these webinars are one-time irrevocable decisions that will be made per Farm Service Agency Farm, so per FSA Farm. And just as you see there on the page or on the screen, um, the deadline for updating payment yields and the deadline for retaining and reallocating base acres. Those two, those two decisions, which are made by landlords, that deadline is February 27th. And then March 31st is currently the deadline for the program election decision. Uh, that has, FSA has indicated they may move that back. Uh, but right now we know that the deadline is March 31st. So plenty of time to make it. Um, but just kind of keeping in mind those times. Just, just re we, we, and again, we're going to focus on the third one today, Pu production election decision we talked a lot about the update payment yields and retain a or reallocate base acres on our last webinar so if you want to go to the october october 10th webinar which is linked on on our on, on our on our website um, if you go down to the bottom there and go to october 10th webinar that one dealt a lot with the first two decisions and if you go to the top to our program choices, our program steps, um, step two is, is keep or update, update yields. Again, we talk a lot about that there. And retain or reallocate base acres. So that's, that, that, that's where that information is at. And actually, we spent most of our time on those, the last one. So we thought we'd start with step four today. Yeah, that's right. We've quite a bit of information archived there on the on the previous webinars and on this farm farm bill toolbox website. Um, so great reminder that uh, information is available if you are looking for more information. Um, and as Gary noted, we're going to start with uh, the step four um, in this in this uh, seven step process for making the decisions. And this is going to be the step in which we compare the arc, the agriculture risk coverage at the county level, and the price loss coverage. Um, just keeping in mind that the decision here is for all the producers on the farm. And as noted in prior uh, discussions, that means uh, those individuals who share in the risk of producing the crop on the farm and have the right to share in any crop that is marketed. Um, and that specifically uh, relates to whether or not uh, landlords in a cash lease situation are, in, uh, are making this decision. And as we understand from the regulation, um, that a landlord in a cash lease situation is not uh, – a producer is not considered a producer on that farm and thus is not a p not making this decision. It will be made by those who are farming on that farm. So uh, kind of a, a significant change that we saw in the regulation that uh, we want to make sure everybody's aware of. And that also means 
correct me if I'm wrong here, if you have, but a, sh- a share rent situation, the landowner and the uh, farmer would be both part of the decision, but they can't make different decisions. That's correct. It has to be a unanimous decision. And absolutely right. If it's a share lease in which they are sharing that risk of producing the crop or in the marketing of that crop, then that is a uh, that means everybody, including that landlord and all producers on that farm, have to make a unanimous decision by that March 31st deadline. Um, like I said, we're gonna the, the the decision itself involves the Art County program, the Art Individual program, and the Price Loss Coverage program. We're gonna focus first on Art County and Price Loss Coverage. Um, we got a quick question come in about a flex cash rent situation, uh, and that is a good question. We would want to see that defined out a little bit more by FSA, but I think the initial thinking is in a flex situation, you are sharing in the risk in the in the marketing. So, so long as you have an mm-hmm. argument of sharing in that. No? We've got disagreement <laughs> here? But uh, in the last farm bill, they did, uh, they, they did define a flex cash as a cash. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, so... But I, I would still say that there's some gray area, some gray area on that one, and uh, I would uh, I would get confirmation on yeah. that before uh, before yeah. making any decision on on an assumption. And we'll actually make sure we'll we'll, we'll ask the FSA that question and see what they what they say say about that. So yeah. that's a very good question. That's a great question, and one we'll dig into a little bit more and, and provide some more information on um, because that certainly. <laughs> <laughs> is not necessarily uh, completely defined. Um, but going back here to step four, uh, like I said, we're going to look closely at ARC County and PLC, keeping in mind that the ARC Individual Program is also part of this decision, and we'll discuss that in a later webinar. Just doing an operational comparison of ARC County and price loss coverage, you see here on, on the screen in front of you, just kind of the differences in the way the programs operate or work. The County ARC Program is a is a county revenue program. It uses a five-year Olympic moving average of the market year average price. Again, that's that 12-month price calculated by USDA for the marketing year. Notice that there are reference price plugs. So anytime uh, that market year average price is below the reference price, the reference price is used in its place. It also, because it's a revenue program, uses yields. And that's that five-year Olympic moving average of county yields with a plug again in any year where the, the, yield, the county yield was less than 70% of the T yield. So you replace that. And then just kind of keeping in mind there's a 10% max on this, which means it covers from 86 down to 76% of the county revenue, but you can't get above that 10% um, benchmark. In comparison, the PLC program uses a reference price. The reference price does not change, whereas that Olympic movie, moving average price will change throughout the course of the Farm Bill. The, reference, or the PLC program uses a payment yield. That also does not change, and it also means there's no yield coverage under the price loss coverage program. It is purely a price coverage program. And then again, the coverage range, if you will, for for price loss coverage is from that reference price. So anytime the market year average price is below that reference price, all the way down to the loan rate. Uh, You you cannot double cover under the loan rate, but between the market year or between the reference price and their loan rate, uh, that's your range for price loss coverage, and then you're going to use that payment yield that could have been updated uh, in one of the previous decisions as uh, how to calculate the payments. But there's no yield coverage. There's no movement on either that reference price or that payment yield during the life of the farm bill. Ah, uh, we got a we got. Uh, this is from Stan Wilson, Illinois State <laughs> Office. <laughs> FSA Stan. Cons- considers a variable flex or a combination lease as a cash lease, same as last of farm bill. So if you have a a flexible variable lease, it will be considered a cash lease. And we thank Stan for writing it. We appreciate that update uh, on the spot from FSA. Very helpful. Um, uh, what does T yield mean? That's the transitional yield calculated by crop insurance. Um, it's what they use in the crop insurance program, and it's, it it's, will be translated into this if, if it's 70 or 70% or less of that transitional yield. And, and Gary or Nick, if you want to talk a little bit more about the transitional yield, uh, to help define that out, um, please do. Um, each co- each 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 county has a as a plug yield, and if uh, if the yield gets below that, it will be the plug yield will be used, or the transitional yield will be used rather than 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 that yield. So, and, and I, I, to be as vague as possible, the transition yields are based on a relatively long term average of the of the county average yields uh, for for that county. So that's where the number comes from, uh, but that is a number that RMA calculates at the county level. 
Um, and again, it's it's just the number that'll be used if if uh, if actual yields uh, fall below seventy percent of that transition. Right. Um, so what what we're going to look at even more closely here. So we're we're looking between Art County and price loss coverage, and how do these two programs operate, and sort of how to make that decision, or what are some of the things to consider to put context around that decision. Uh, so we're going to start with comparing prices. Prices uh, certainly have been uh, on on everybody's mind as as we've watched the markets. Um, and we want to try to keep in mind how prices work in the programs and how that impacts the decision between our county and price loss coverage. On the screen before you uh, is a is a calculation showing how the five year Olympic moving average would work using corn prices for the the most uh, recent or the the previous five years, uh, 2009 to 13. And what you see first off on the top there is uh, in 2009, we had a 355 market year average price. That would be replaced by that 370 reference price. So you see the plug price working uh, in the 2009 crop year. And then you average, you take the Olympic average, which means you drop the highest and the lowest. And so that 370 is the lowest. Uh, you see 2012's market year average price of 689. That is the highest. So those two drop out. The numbers in red with asterisks next to them are the ones that are averaged to get you to that 528 five-year Olympic moving average price. And then that's using the Art County benchmark calculation. Uh, by comparison, then you see the reference price for corn, which is used in the price loss coverage calculation. So anytime the market year average price is below that 370, that's when you trigger a price loss coverage payment. And you can just see kind of a, a comparison between the two for corn here on, on how they use prices in the calculations of, of the program. And Gary, let's jump into what we got here, the comparison tool that uh, we want to go over. And this, this, this uh, <coughs> what you're looking at on the left-hand side of your screen, I think does a pretty good job of illustrating how Arc County and PLC will make payments. If you go to the left-hand corner, left-hand, upper right-hand corner, you can see that this is an example. This is for Illinois, Logan County, and it's for corn. And corn is, a, is, is what we're looking at here. And that the price loss coverage payment yield is 134 bushels per acre. This uh, this screen that you're looking at is a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. You can download it from our FarmDoc website. If you go to yesterday's October 16th um, Far, uh, FarmDoc Daily, you'll see a description of this program and making a comparison to our ARC sample farms here over 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 on our on our left. But let's let me go through and let's start with ARC County. And I'm going to describe the payment that we could possibly get in 2014. And this program, for, for, for the prices that you see over the, on the left-hand side of the screen, for the county yield of $215 per acre. Can you move your mouse over there? This is, all right, so 214 If a user enters this, this county yield and the next one, the market year average price, that it, this program is going to calculate the payment given those entries. We picked a 215 county yield, a 340 price here for this for the for the for this illustration. <coughs> 215 is likely to be, I don't know, it's be interesting to mm -hmm. see, but we're looking at a 200 bushel average for the state. That would mean that some counties have to be have considerably above that average. Our county for night for 2004 will have 172 bushel uh, yield and that is Olympic average the Olympic average is the throwing out the low, which would be 125 bushel, throwing out the high, 198, and averaging the three in between. 528 is the benchmark price, and we illustrated how we got that on the last side. And if you multiply those two together and times 0.86, that's your, your ARC county guarantee. It's a county guarantee. If revenue is below that, we get a payment. Given the 215, um, 215 um, yield for 340 price, there would be a $43 ARC payment. And by the way, that's times 0.85. So if you take 2788 and subtract 215 times 340, the result, and then multiply it by 0.85, that's how that $43 come about. So that... 
Go ahead. Just to kind of maybe clarify that, 0. 0.85 is is what the payment, so you get paid on 85% of your base acres. So that's why you multiply that there. These calculations are already done in this tool. So this what you're entering are just these boxes here. And this is already calculating the five-year Olympic averages across the guarantee, which 86% of that county revenue is the guarantee, and that's that number there. So these are all being done uh, through the through the spreadsheet as you get there and showing this. Based on this yield and this price, that would be the expected payment. Yep. And if you go to the top of this, again, this is for Illinois Logan County corn. You, you can select any state, county, crop combination, and this tool will give what we have as far as the yields and prices for that crop. So this is this is this is a county a nationwide tool. So in our example, this would pay forty three dollars per acre. Price loss coverage would make a thirty four dollar payment, and that is that three forty. And there's a reference price of three seventy. So if the three forty um, market year average price is below three seventy thirty cents. It's below thirty cents times our program yield one thirty four. And again, times 0.85 because we get paid on 0.85 acres. Any year that uh, the price is below 370 for corn, it's 840 for soybeans. Um, we would get a get get a payment. So in our example, we get a $34 payment on our county for th 2014. $11 payment in 2016, or excuse me, 2015, and that $11 is because we have a 370 price. If we had a 340 price in, uh, in, in 2015, we would have the same $34 payment that we had in 2014. So, and, and, and our county would make higher payments in this case because we put a lower yield. We're, we're, not a, we're assuming you get 186 bushels rather than 215 bushels. And so. here's where one of those significant differences is. As you notice, from 2015 to 2016 in this price, the, the price is used here, we crossed this 370 threshold. So once you're above 370, price loss coverage is not paying because, that, because of the way that program works as, com as compared to using that five-year Olympic average to get you to those numbers. And so that's showing here one of the important differences between the two programs and how they use prices um, how they use prices in the uh, in the calculations of the program. Yeah, and I guess uh, Gary, this isn't necessarily a price forecast. Just some <laughs> just some numbers that if if prices were at these levels and if yields were at these levels, these are the the kinds of payments you'd expect uh, in in Logan County for corn for corn base uh, for for Art County and PLC. We've had a question to where we find that sheet. If we go over here. Hit, hit the plus sign over there. Yep, yep. And type in Farm Doc Daily. You see it right there. So I, we're going to show you. So we're going to. F There's a couple ways to get this, but if you go to the Farm Doc Daily spreadsheet, or or go go up a little bit, go up a little bit. All right, stop right here. <laughs> All right. If you click that download here, and this is from the October. Uh, 16th newsletter, you will get this spreadsheet, the Art County PLC comparison tool. That's probably the easiest way to get it. Um, again, that's October 16th uh, uh, um, 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 a pod, or excuse uh, October 16th entry. Right. The other way place you can get this is on Farm Doc and go into the FAST section. So go into Farm Doc. Go up a little bit. There you go. If you go into the farm dock and they're going to go into the fast section right there, it will be the first one that's listed. So there's two ways to get that tool. So both of those ways will get you that 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 tool. <clears throat> and again, so. this article from yesterday uh, provides a lot of, a lot more explanation and discussion about what we're talking about here this morning looking at the Art County PLC and helping uh, provide even more explanation of this comparison tool and how it sort of interrelates or can be used in conjunction with the APAS online calculator. And so we, 
we've got quite a bit more information out there in, in this article, and we certainly uh, encourage everybody to, to look at that as well uh, as part of uh, the resources available to help understand uh, this program choice. Again, the, the, big, the big thing, our county is a, a county revenue program. It's going to pay when, when revenue is below a guarantee. PLC is a target price program, which we've now renamed a reference price program, but it will make payments when prices are below a reference price. All right, so we're going to kind of go through this a little bit more, just trying to sort out um, and looking at, at multiple crops at this point, trying to sort out how this program is going to work across different crops and, uh, and what it means, particularly fo- uh, with a focus on prices, because prices are such a driver right now of what's going on. What you see on the screen before you is a calculation of what the 2014 uh, five-year Olympic moving average uh, would be for multiple crops and just comparing that to the reference price and how that – just a quick kind of comparison to see – uh, crop by crop, how that five-year Olympic moving, moving average of prices, of market year average prices, would compare to the reference price for the crop. Um, and also w- wanting to remind and constantly keeping in mind that this ARC County calculation is going to be very dependent on those average county yields, uh, both the actual and the five-year Olympic moving average. And so we we don't want to solely uh, focus on price. Uh, we want to always keep in the back of our minds those county yields will be uh, a huge part of of the ARC County program, but starting here looking at prices, this is one way to compare across the two programs. Yeah, so I think maybe another way to uh, to say what, what Jonathan just said was, um, if you want to go back to that slide, Jonathan, with, uh, sure. with the two columns. So in the middle there, you have the five-year Olympic moving average for our county. Um, you can think of that as the, it's, it, it is the price guarantee component uh, for the ARC County program uh, for the 2014 crop year. Uh, comparing that to the reference price, which which is the price price guarantee for the the price loss coverage program for for every year 2014 and, and moving forward, uh, it doesn't mean that Art County is going to make a payment if prices fall below those five year Olympic moving averages. Um, again, uh, a lot depends on on what the county yield number comes in at. Um, but again, just just focusing on the price piece of the programs is is uh, are the numbers that you're that you're looking at right there. And a great question, uh, just always as, as a good reminder, is someone just asked, you know, is that Olympi- Olympic moving average updated each year? And yes, it is. Uh, the Olympic moving average price as well as the Olympic moving average yields will change every year because you're going to use the five most recent years. So, for example, next year we won't be using 2009 and the Olympic moving average will pick up 2014. And so it moves through time. And we'll adjust through time based on what is going on in the market year average and what is going on in that county yield average. Um, that is significantly different than price loss coverage. The pr- the, we always want to keep in mind that reference price you see right here will not change for the life of the farm bill. And so you just these these are are different, very operate different operation. Price loss coverage, the reference price cha- stays the exact same through the through the entire farm bill, and you're always using the payment yields to make the calculation. But here. This will move. Every year it will change based on what the most recent five years are for yields and prices. So that's a great question and a great reminder of how that works. And actually, just click on the next slide here, Jonathan, and we'll get get an example of that for soybeans. All right. For soybeans here, the uh, benchmark (coughs) price in 2014 is $12.27. And that's based on the average of the $9.59 2009 price, 1130 price, 2010, 2015 price in 2011, 1440 in 2012, and $13 in 2013. In 2015, the benchmark price is also 1227. But if you look at what's happening in 1227, we're dropping off that 959 2009 price, which is the low. It's the low in the Olympic average, and we're bringing in 10 for 2014. In 2014, we don't know that yet, obviously. Um, this is the, U- the price series you see here is the USDA forecast. So their USDA forecast is $10, 866, 9, 8, 97, 9, 19, and 919 is 2018. Um, 
if you if that would happen, if that series would happen, we would have a twelve twenty seven price in 2012, 2014, 20, 27 and twenty fifteen. And ironically, for both corn and soybeans, the market year average or the benchmark price in both twenty fourteen and twenty fifteen are going to be the same unless we get a heroic rebound in prices for twenty fifteen. <laughs> or 2014, excuse me. And then it would go down to 1183, and again, we're rolling in these lower prices, and that would cause the benchmark price to go down. Remember always, the lowest price that can be used in the benchmark price is the reference price. So if we ever had a price that goes below 840, we would use that reference price in that calculation. Right. Yeah, you can certainly see how that price and the yields would change, and thus changing the revenue. Um, and the eight, the point we got a question on the point eight six. That is multiplied uh, against the revenue number. So the five year Olympic average price times the five year Olympic average yield gets you the uh, revenue benchmark. Point eight six times that is the guarantee for Art County on that. So that five eighty eighty benchmark guarantee there is 55 580 for 2014 is is five uh, 55 bushel for 2014 12 27 for benchmark price times 0. 0.86 this this example by the way is for McLean County Illinois so this is a, yeah we have it right at the top here if we would go to that spreadsheet we would get it, McLean County Illinois so, soybeans in there and this would be the calculation so yeah and we're going to demonstrate here on the right hand side of the screen we go to the a pass tool yeah so the a pass sample farm tool uh that we have talked about in the previous uh uh webinars we're just jumping through that real quick i entered mclean county illinois um we're using usda prices here on this one and remember, what this tool does is provide you that, that kind of quick, uh, uh, basic uh, analytics on how the programs would work using forecasted models and a, and a ton of information uh, and data in here. And what it does is it, it creates this simulated farm. So you've got a farm uh, that, that would be somewhat representative of McLean County based on historical uh, data and information for McLean County, and, and this is the size of that farm. And then we kind of get an expected payment uh, out of that based on that farm. Uh, keeping in mind, I popped up the the price series, uh, the price forecasts that are being used. And then, Gary, let's talk a little bit about, because uh, your comparison tool is using these exact numbers. And what you see here then is the uh, acre by acre comparison in the APAS sample farms. And there's some differences in what we're seeing. And, and so here's a good chance to kind of talk about how we can use the two tools uh, together and what, what we're seeing as a difference between them. All right. If you go over to the right hand side of the screen, the screen there, you'll see a soybean. And we're showing soybeans uh, in our what if two and our, our soybeans. Uh, PLC has a payment here of three, $3 per acre. And you're looking at that and going, well, if we're using the um, the uh, USDA forecast price of $10, how do we get a $3 payment? What's going on on the APAS side of things is we're actually running many different yield and price scenarios. And the prices, the, the price scenarios that we're using average $10. So we have some price scenarios where we're actually going way below $10 because of just price variability. That price variability is parameterized based on previous year's price variability. And you can, and if, remember, we're even right now for 2014, WASD is giving a price range for, 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 um, for, um, for um, 2014 prices. So when you're looking at the APAS tool, we have that variability built into it. So there's a small chance of PLC payments for soybeans, which would mean, this would be somewhat depressing, we would have a market year average price of, of, of soybeans below 840. Historical variability would have said that that happened sometime in, in the previ right. pre previous history. Um, our county has a, you know, uh, has a 35 on the a pass and 30 35 dollar payment we come up with a 34 dollar payment on our what if again what if it's looking at one scenario the a pass tool is looking at many scenarios and then averaging those um, 
and, and, and you can get a feel for some of the variability by looking at the safety net tool, which we will talk about some other time. But, but, yeah. but this just gives you a, a feel for where we're at on soybeans. Right, so, so APAS, maybe another way to think about it is, is APAS is recognizing that we still don't know what that 2014 price is going to be yet. We have an expectation that it's going to be close to $10. Could be above $10, could be below $10. So that PLC payment you see on the right of an expected PLC payment of, of $3 for soybeans for the, for the 2014 years is just recognizing the fact that we could see a price lower than $10 and that there could be a payment. If, if the price was 10 there would not be a payment, but there is the chance that we could see prices below that, that 840 reference price uh, for 2014. Yeah, and the, sorry. Go ahead. And I was just going to make. Yeah, well, we had a question. Oh, if yeah. if a farmer chooses to enroll in either program this year, can they enroll in PLC the next? No, and that's what makes this decision so hard. Is by March thirty one, the farmer and the landowner, if they have a share, if they have a share in it, have to make this decision, and then it lasts the life of the farm bill. So you you March thirty one, at least. So far, that's the deadline, and you will make the PLC, ARC County, and then there's ARC Individual, which we're not going to go into detail this time that you could could enroll the whole farm in. But, yes, it has to be made by that date, and it can't change over the life of the farm bill. Yeah, and that's and kind of following up on both of those points is kind of what you see here between these two tools. We don't know what's going to happen in 2014, let alone through 20, all the way out through 2018. And one of the things, you can see that, you can make very specific uh, forecasts of your own and guesses in the what-if tool, the, the spreadsheet. And you really see that then, of course, when you go into this five-year horizon in the APAS tool, and you begin to think about all the variability that goes into these, these future years. And so what you're looking at is trying to get a sense of, you know, the probability of payments, size of payments, what may be happening depending on uh, what pri- what range of prices we're talking about. So these are two complementary ways of kind of sorting out program operation, understanding the significant amount of unknown that we have in the future to make these decisions. And so you you wouldn't want to just think of it as, as you know, you're only going to see ARC County and not PLC, even though the, the reference price is higher than forecasted prices. It is always going to be a chance in future years that, that some of that would trigger. And so you've got a sense of that um, using the two tools kind of in a, in a complementary fashion um, and looking at, like we said, various price series. If you go to the higher prices that the Congressional Budget Office has forecasted, it's going to change that, that, uh, that estimate. The, we have, have a question on this. If, 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 if a county has an irrigated or non-irrigated practice, will the spreadsheet work for those counties that have both? And yes, if, if, if there is a if, if there's an irrigated versus non-irrigated practice, those uh, those uh, those practices will be will be in that spreadsheet. Um, the spreadsheet's downloadable from the Farm Doc website. The APAS tool on the right hand side of your screen is actually a web tool. It's fsa.usapass.com. It was on our third slide that that that. But if you look at the at the top of that, you'll see the web address, and the, and that's not downloadable. That's a web-based tool. Right. So one final note on soybeans, then, as we talked about using both CBO and USDA. So this is a higher price forecast and a USDA price forecast. Compared to the reference price in the bill, you just see this, uh, what kind of things would look like. And one of the reasons why you see lower PLC estimates in the tools is that all these price forecasts are put, are currently have soybean prices in the next five years above that reference price. This means there would be no PLC payment um, in, in those years because the prices, if they stayed above the reference price, there wouldn't be a payment. And again, there's knowing that forecasts are certainly imperfect, there's always a chance that prices would dip below that red line there. But you can kind of see uh, from a program operational standpoint for soybeans, this, this being a big factor, that those price forecasts do not get you into the range of a price loss coverage program in, uh, in the in the forecast that we have in front of us. This, uh, uh, I'm sorry. One final thing. Yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 these, these payments, by the way, for co- price loss coverage in our county are on base acres. So once, and we talked about that last time, reallocated base acres uh, or keep or reallocate base acres, 
the base these art county and plc payments will be based on those 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 base acres so if you if your farm fsa farm has 60 corn acres and 40 big soybean base acres and you plant all corn you will still get a payment on 60 base acres of corn if right. there's a payment there. If soybeans makes a payment, even if you didn't plant corn or soybeans on that farm that year, you will still get a soybean payment. So both, so it's base acres that matter. We have also had a question for ARC PLC will, will, with, will that incorporate with MPCI um, crop insurance uh, alternatives? The short answer to that is, yes, we do that already. If you, if you go into build your own farm, you can look at, at, um, at alternatives. We'll talk about that down, down the road a little bit. The one thing to keep in mind in, about that, particularly as we relate to um, crop insurance, is that the big difference is SCO availability for PLC and not for ARC County. And finally... <laughs> As we're looking at this, what's the basis for the market year average price? And that's always a good question. <laughs> the market year average price is a cash price. It's calculated by NAS, National Agricultural Statistical Service, and they do a survey of elevators. The uh, market year average price for corn and soybeans begins calculation in September and ends in August. So the 2014 market year average price begin, began calculation in September 2014. It ends in August 2015. So we won't know. So if you're looking at this 2014, why we can't say what we know about 2014 price, we're, we're just two months into it, and we only have one month. Of, actually, we they haven't published the September price yet. Um, so it's a market year average price. The other thing about this is, is you, if you don't know the price, you can't make the payments. And the payments for the 2014 year will occur after October 1, 2015. Market year average prices do vary by crop. Wheat is from June to May. And or July, July to June. 1 to June. July to June. July to June. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's, a, again, a good reminder of just the significant amount of, of unknown and, and uh, future <laughs> guesswork about the future that goes into these programs and a, a good reminder of why we're using the, the multitude of different uh, complementary kind of aspects to try and help unpack and sort out this decision. We're going to move through some more crops here just to kind of show this uh, around the country and with different crops. and. Gary, we got the, the comparison tool here for, uh, for Costa County, uh, Iowa on corn. Kasuth, John. Kasuth. Oh, my word. I, I apologize to the folks in Kasuth County. I messed that up royally. <laughs> Thank, thanks, <laughs> Nick, for keeping me. Jeez. <laughs> Pronunciation, right? Yeah. And, uh, and here we're, we're again showing a three – well, we're showing a 350 price for, for, for market year average, 190 bushel corn yield. So um, – and that would generate a $79 ARC payment, and, a, and the PLC payment in this case would be $32 a to $32 a year. You can get a look at those for different price 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 horizons here for 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 um, for under the uh, under the uh, A pass tool. Again, if you go to the A pass tool and go go to the expected program payment team page by crop. You will see you can get a one-year horizon, 2014. And actually, the one thing that I would tell you right now about the 2014 price is, is we will update those, uh, those uh, payments periodically. But the big date when they will get updated is when NAS releases county yields. <coughs> uh, NAS will release county yields end of February. And then after that, you'll have a much better feel for both ARC County and PLCC payments. Um, the, on the APAS tool, if you head to the, towards the top there, you can see we have USDA prices, which is what CBO prices, which um, which are higher than 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 USDA prices, and also FAPRI prices. Those those prices are preset. If you want to um, want to uh, enter your own price expectations here, you can do that as well and you build your own farm. 
Here, though, the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, present the uh, the important point for corn is again that market year average price, where that is relative to the 370 um, uh, reference price, and. And here's here's some of those pro forecasts moving forward. Yeah, you can see here the CBO higher price series um, for corn in the in the out years as compared to the USDA lower price series. The red line again is that reference price of 370, and you can you can see both in in the comparison tool uh, if you enter the prices, but easily here in this in this APAS tool how that makes a difference as you get below that reference price, particularly in the out years how that makes a difference in what these uh, payment expectations would be as we go through it. And so, again, the, the importance of this idea of what prices may do and how you manage through this uh, with these programs, and you see how it plays out in the program operation themselves uh, because of that five-year Olympic moving average of the prices you're actually seeing in the market versus this reference price. Um, and that's going to change the relationship in the uh, – in the program itself, um, we've had a, a had a had a had a couple questions here. First, going back to what that market year average price is, and is it a survey of ele elevators? And yes, it is. And what they do, what UTNAS does when they calculate the market year average prices, ask elevators to report bushels, b bushels purchased, and price. And so it's a cash price, but the, a good example of how that can differ is in January when a lot of people, f farmers forward contract grain, the forward contract grain will enter into that price. Um, again, for our county, and uh, um, it's average yields and average yields for the county. It's county yields that matter. And the market year average price is for the nation. So uh, it's for the nation. Um, we got a question here talking about PLC and the supplemental coverage option. And just real quick, I want to note that because um, you see that in the five-year horizon of payments because it is not available for the 2014 crop. It's only available beginning in 2015, and then it can only be mixed with the PLC program. And you see, as you see this chart here showing you the kind of comparison of the forecast price to the reference price, you see that change in this estimate in APAS over the five-year horizon. The higher prices that CBO forecast changes the sort of relationship, or you will, or the comparison between ARC and PLC. And then over the five years, the SEO, uh, uh, potential SEO payments come into play. So again, just kind of uh, trying to sort that out. We want to get through some other crops too, just but, to make sure we're. Oh, sorry. Uh, just on that SEO, the, your, the the questions are very good, <laughs> and let me. We are going to deal with this later on in yep. more detail. Um, right now, RMA is releasing all the premiums for SCO, so we will be able to make those 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 comparisons. As far as this decision, though, it looks to us like there's sort of a dividing line from crops. If your crop in your county has an RP policy or a combo product that goes up to the 85% coverage level, SCO really doesn't add a lot of meaningful coverage. You might choose it because it, it will have a lower, lower payment, but we'll talk about that yeah. uh, l later on. We, when we see an 85% coverage level, it's likely that, that – uh, in most cases, the size of the ARC County versus the PLC payments will be driving the decision rather than what's going to happen on the crop insurance size. And Nick, do you sort of agree with that? And yeah, and I, I guess uh, on, the, on the flip side of that, if, if you're in an area where the maximum coverage level you can purchase uh, on, on a combo policy – for for your for the for the crop you're you're thinking about might be at 75 percent for example a lot of places in Illinois you can only buy wheat coverage up to 75 percent so you're 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 limited there and and SCO goes up to 86 percent so adding adding SCO onto that 75 percent policy is 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 kind of a much different effect than adding SCO onto an 85 percent coverage level so um, I think Gary is exactly right. Um, if you're in an area that you can already purchase 85 percent individual, um, you know that individual coverage is is 
I don't think people would argue it is superior risk management coverage to to area coverage, which is what SCO is based on. Um, so if you can already if you can buy eighty five percent individual, um, SCO may not add a whole lot to that. But if you can only get up to seventy five percent individual, then then SCO is probably something to consider uh, more carefully. By the way, this is covered. We're talking about step four of our decision today. And like all the time, uh, we get a lot of questions, very good questions. Keep those coming. The SCO decision is step six of our process. <laughs> so we're, we're talking about that. We, we, we really, we're going to talk more about, again, about SCO in the future. And it will really help us to talk about it when we have the premiums for the product. And then we can make more specific specific calculations. Um, we had another question about irrigated and non-irrigated. And if you're irrigated, would you be more concerned about the price side than than the yield side? And and irrigated, assuming you have less 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 variable yields, which you should, price will become the more important part of your part of your risk. I would still say though, you better look at how those prices compare to. Um, compared to the, the, the reference price. And, le, and let me take an example here. I know there isn't many soybean acres that are irrigated, but if, if, if you irrigated soybeans, and I know that's, that's the, you probably don't do that, but if you irrigated soybeans, price getting below 840 is, is not, not, as a, not very likely. So, you know, do you, you still might be shading yourself to a different revenue sort of program in that in that case yeah so we were talking about wheat let's look at wheat real quick on kind of what how that uh, compares uh we, we got the kansas here and and look at um, a simulated sample farm and the apas tool for wheat a uh, good size wheat operation and gary the comparison tool then again um and you just see uh, again that wheat reference price is 550 uh, per bushel and so anytime that that mark your average is below that 550, you're going to trigger that PLC payment. You can see an estimate of those using, again, the USDA prices over here. Um, you can see the size of those payments as compared to the ARC County for wheat um, using uh, the five-year Olympic average again. And so we're using uh, a, a, a kind of different look. Um, you see uh, c the chart again to compare that CBO and the, the high CBO prices versus the low USDA prices against that reference price to give you an idea of payments. And if we jump into the um, APAS tool again, uh, you start to look at uh, the expected payments in the program. Uh, we start with the one-year horizon, and you get a sense of how uh, those, those prices, USDA level prices, down in here below that reference price, and you can see it makes a difference uh, in the expected payments for, for wheat. Again, on wheat, one of the uh, – it looks – the PLC versus ARC County choice looks much, uh, much closer from an expected payment standpoint than for corn or soybeans. One of the things people are going to have to keep in mind about wheat is that there have been some very low yields here in some counties. And, um, and um, when we get better estimates of what the county yields will be, it might be that the 2014 payment will be large. And you're going to have to weigh that Art County large payment in 2014 versus the the fact that potentially large PLC potentially payments, payments right. in, the, yeah, in the, future. the future. Again, you know we are always talking about future, and predicting the future is problematic. Yes, it makes it makes for a difficult decision. Uh, what well, uh, makes it even more difficult as you try to sort out where prices and yields might go. But just kind of keeping in mind those program operation and the difference we see in it. Um, again, on that wheat, you see the SCO come up here on APAT. On the, on the web tool, you see SCO come in over the five-year horizon, and we're using that 70% coverage, uh, which both Gary and Nick had mentioned is a big, big factor in that SCO decision. Um, we're getting a little bit late in the hour here, so we want to maybe move through um, a couple more crops and just to, to continue to get a sense of this for folks around the country. If you looked at barley, uh, out of Idaho here, you can see uh, the barley reference price is 495. That makes for a different operation for uh, for our friends in Idaho thinking about barley um, and how that would work. And so we can jump again into the A pass, into the sample farm, get a get a look at a barley farm, 
a simulated barley farm, of course. These aren't real farms. These are numbers using the historical planet, but you see we got a good, a decent amount of uh, barley acres here. And then how will that program look? How do the programs look uh, in comparison? You see barley versus Art County. Uh, you see that in the, in the um, comparison tool here using those five-year Olympic average prices and yields to get your revenue number and then comparing across the programs. And again, for barley, then we see that both forecasts are below the reference price, which really changes or uh, emphasizes how PLC works in a program with, with a reference price where we're seeing forecasted prices below it. And you see that show up here in these estimates uh, in APAS. And again, for for individual decisions, if you if 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 you're looking at uh, that the ind individual decisions for your farm, if you if if you know the reference price for your crop and you have price expectations, and they're above it, above the reference price, it will shade you towards our county. If it's below the reference price, uh, and significantly below the reference price, it might be sh shading you more towards uh, towards uh, um, PLC. As, a, as in a further example on that, let's look at grain sorghum out of uh, Texas. And you can see that, uh, again, you see these kind of comparison calculations of the five-year Olympic average using the yields and the prices. Here you've got a 395 reference price for grain sorghum. And you can see the difference in the operation uh, that that's going to show in that low price scenario uh, from USDA in the one-year, the five-year horizon. And if we looked at the reference prices in comparison to the uh, forecast prices, you see how that is is uh, forecasted out over the next five years, significantly significantly below that USDA is, uh, below that reference price. And that's going to show up again uh, in these estimated expected payments for the programs. Um, we'll do one more uh, look at the peanut program and the peanut reference price. Um, here we'll go to Georgia real quick and look at another example. Up, up, up. <laughs> yeah. Georgia, Worth County. Worth County. We'll go all the way down here to Worth. <clears throat> Got a question. Uh, if I have two FSA farms in different states, do I have to select the same coverage in both states? Again, assuming you're talking about the farm program decisions we're, we're discussing, um, that 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 decision is FSA farm by FSA farm and the two programs we are focused on today are actually crop by crop right. so even on the same FSA farm you could have PLC coverage on your corn and art county on your soybeans um, so so no you don't necessarily have to have the same program choice of uh, on on the two FSA on the two FSA farms yeah. now uh, arc individual um, does does include all FSA farms, uh, all FSA farms enrolled in, in ARC individual within a state are kind of aggregated together. Again, we're going to talk more about uh, that in, a, in a future webinars. Um, but, uh, you know, so even even ARC individual, um, you could you could have it on one farm in one state. And if you had an FSA farm in another state, you could pick a different program for that farm. Take, a, take another example. Let's say you have three farms in one county, FSA County, you could enroll, in a, and they all have corn, you could have corn in Arc County on one farm, PLC on the other farm, right. and if you chose to, you could enroll the other farm in Arc Individual, which would then aggregate all the crops together. Not to complicate the decisions for everybody, <laughs> but there are certainly a, a host of variety, or a, a host of different ways to sort this out. It is FSA by FSA farm, and in the case of Arc County versus PLC, it's crop by crop. Um, and so we'll, we are getting close to the end here, so we will um, wrap up on this and take some more questions. Um, just running through kind of the choices you have, um, just as a reminder that expected payments uh, for much of that, for a lot of these crops as we've shown as you kind of go through uh, the various sample farms and the various comparison of, of, of forecast to price uh, loss coverage reference prices, much depends on what your price expectations are. And then the second part of this, Gary is, is, and, and Nick, is that we, we're thinking what kind of risk and how do you deal with the risks? Do you look at the, the significantly lower prices over five years or some, some in-between range of prices and low yields and, and, or yield variation? And that's a big part of it. And then, of course, as some of the questions and as we've discussed, SCO comes into that factor, and that's a, a, a step later on. Um, as we think about PLC and, and coupling SCO with, with PLC 
and um, the, on the farm. And the type number two, what type of risk do you want to cover is particularly important for corn, soybeans, and wheat, where you're sort of looking at uh, uh, projected prices near or above the reference price. So in that case, if we're above the reference price, um, looking at projections like for soybeans, PLC won't make payments. But if you're getting concerned about, all right, the reference price for soybeans is 840, I'm really concerned about $7 prices. I don't believe that's going to happen very often, but I'm really concerned about it. You still might want to be concerned, get, 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 uh, get, look, take PLC for those very low prices. And again, P- SCO is only available for PLC, which we are going to talk more about, which is, will be a discussion for a whole webinar. And y'all, mm, that's right. y'all. And, and we don't we don't necessarily mean to, to discount or disregard uh, Arc Individual either, but it but it is a it is a more complex program to talk about. And the Arc County and PLC starting point uh, in terms of comparing those programs, it's it's uh, relatively easier. Um, they're they're both crop by crop programs, whereas Arc Individual is going to be combining crops, so it's easier to make that comparison. Um, since they both are, are crop specific um, and, and pay out on base acres. Yeah, I think those are good points. I mean, there's a lot of things to try to understand about these programs, uh, and that's why we're trying to get as much information out there as possible and, and, uh, and, and a variety of ways to try to estimate what those programs would look like um, for your farm and based on different expectations, where do you think prices are going to be, yield risk issues, and how that's covered in the programs and, and this the operational differences. And so um, as we get ready to close this one out here, uh, we'll take more questions if, they, if they're coming in. Um, but we wanted to uh, try to spend time today again trying to sort out and unpack this decision um, on what you think is going to uh, make the most sense for your farm given the, the, the reality that we just don't know where prices and yields are going to be in the, in the coming years. Um, we just got a question here. Uh, can I choose the Art County program for corn and PLC for beans on one farm? Yes. Nick, that's if you've got if you've got corn base and bean base, you could choose Art County for your corn base, PLC for your bean base. If that's a farm that you plant to one crop in any given year, um, for instance, you rotate that farm all corn one year, all beans the next. The the those program choices though, and your payments are still tied to that base. So we get a lot of questions too about am I going to be potentially getting a payment for a crop I'm not planting. Yes, that can happen. Um, and and it, am I not going to get a payment, even though I'm planting a crop that triggers a payment in, in these programs, that can also happen. So um, yeah, everything is tied to base and you can mix these things, uh, Art County and PLC at least, uh, within a farm. Yep. And uh, just, just a reminder again, this webinar will be up on our website sometime probably Monday next week. And if you want more information about Step 4, go to their Step 4. Um, uh, last, the, uh, the, uh, the web the, the, on our ARC PLC decision. If you go to our, uh, and we're, uh, we're <laughs> loving. got lost amongst uh, the screens. There we go. <laughs> there's our. Here's the step, here's the step four on the, on the Farm Bill Toolbox giving you more information about comparing that uh, linkage to more uh, more background information, uh, the chance to jump into this APAS tool, uh, watch videos on each part of this, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, more information than you'll need or as much information as you need um, as you try to sort out this decision. The other thing we'd point to is yesterday's October 16th Farm Doc Daily Post, which will make show the What If tool and also the APAS tool and talk about in writing what we, we covered here today. If you, so we got a question about the APAS tool model and simulating planning horizons. If it's looking at past five years, um, soybeans look like a bad choice. If USDA price forecast becomes true, yes. I mean, but this, this is our challenge. We're using, uh, in the APAS tool, you're using historical data and information as a way to uh, try and f- simulate, if you will, trying to guess the future, trying to forecast what's going on. Yeah. And then you're using those price forecasts. And so that lower price forecast 
uh, makes a difference in many of the, many of the crops. Uh, it's, you're talking about soybeans, so we can jump back up and kind of show um, one of the challenges for soybeans being that where the reference price is in comparison to where the forecasted prices are. Both CBO and USDA have forecasted prices above that reference price, which makes um, which adds to that that challenge with PLC and soybeans because unless you're below the reference price, it's not going to trigger a payment. So if either of these uh, forecasted scenarios come to pass, um, it makes for a tough component uh, to make PLC work for soybeans. But I think Gary made a great point about, um, you know, you, what are your price expectations? As the farmer, what do you need to manage around in, in future years? How do you deal with uh, the risk that prices could be, low, could be below that 840? And again, not just our price is going to be low, but then how do, if they're below the 840, how does that compare to the five-year Olympic average that's used in the ARC program along with the yield numbers in the ARC program? And so, you know, just again, there's, there's no perfect way to do this um, because we are looking through imperfect information into the future, um, but, but using these kind of capabilities to get uh, some estimate. But we're specifically on the APAS tools uh, uh, forecasting 2014 through 2018. We got the USDA. We got three price forecast in there for the means, and we use historical variability on both yields and prices in coming up with those. <clears throat> um, and and again, yeah, if you're looking at any of those price forecasts which are above the the the, the reference price for soybeans, it's going to be a tough choice for to. to tough case to make for PLC on soybeans. Yeah, and, and not to just focus on corn and soybeans, but they certainly provide a good, sort of a good example of that comparison, right? If you looked at the reference price for corn, here that red line, compared to your high CBO and your lower USDA estimates, you see how it changes the program operation. Um, and it, you can see that in this, in this APAS tool um, as you bounce between the high and low prices that are there. Uh, it, you can see PLC kind of running closer to the Arc County uh, in that low price scenario because of this, because now you're triggering payments in this range. Whereas, you know, what, what, what is difficult for soybeans is that nobody's forecasting to get below that red line. And so it's just tough to be able to compare Arc County and PLC in that same setting over the five years. And so just... Yeah, and, that, and that's different for barley and peanuts <laughs> where, where, right. where, 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 where most of the forecast are below the reference price. So. Right. And we also know wheat. Wheat's got a tough call because you're forecasted right around that red reference price or well below that red reference price. So that makes, again, tougher decisions because people are sort of in, in the in-between stage. All right, so we got we, we got a couple more questions. Seed corn payments, we we we, we don't know yet how they're going to handle that. We'll get that information to you. Yeah, what we know about seed corn is that it will count in the base acres. Uh, it'll count as corn in your base acre um, when you're looking at the reallocation decision. Um, as far as the yield, I don't know if that was about a yield question, but I don't think we've got any further detail on on. Um, how that's going to work, and uh, we can we can look to FSA and try to get some more inf information on that. Um, APAS is is simulating five years, and we and and yes, um, um, it will will look look poorer for soybeans. The co another question: Does the market year average survey include 2014 grain sales for a January 15th contract made earlier in 2014? All right, so the market year average, so let's, January. So, uh, I don't know, let me, see well, if, let me let's see if Gary and I are, so is this, uh, and uh, maybe this person can, can uh, submit another question or clarification if we're wrong, but I'm interpreting that as this was 2014 crop sold for a January 2015 delivery, um, and that, and that, and that price may have been uh, determined uh, earlier in the spring or throughout the summer. What, if that if that grain is delivered and sold between September 2014 and August 2015, it's part of the the survey and the calculation of the marketing year average price. Yeah, and it's not the cash price on the day that corn is delivered that matters. It's the price that that corn is contracted and sold at. Right. So you'll have some higher. So right now, if you contracted in spring for fall delivery, it's likely a higher price. Just, yeah. just be, hopefully. We get another question about the tenant cash lease situation. Um, 
Again, if you are in a cash lease situation, which we were, had clarified today by FSA that includes a flex lease, um, they will consider that a cash lease. In that case, it is the producer, not the tenant, and not the landlord, excuse me, it is the producers only on that farm who make the ARC PLC decisions. Uh, they do so without a required signature or any kind of authority by the landlord because in that case, um, according to the definition of producer, the landlord in a cash lease situation is not a producer and therefore is not part of that decision um, for for the ARC County PLC or ARC individual uh, components. And we just want to keep everybody in mind that it's a five-year decision and of course uh, uh, landlord and tenant situations can change and so um, we're not necessarily uh, advising you completely lock out the landlord, um, but certainly uh, under the rules, it is only a, a producer decision and not a cash uh, land, a cash lease uh, landlord decision in that case. We There's have a, a question here. Uh, the, the comparison, comparing price forecast to what really took place, and, and obviously you'd have to do that on a historical basis because you don't know what took place until it takes place. But um, Scott Irwin uh, has done a lot of work with uh, and Daryl Good have, have done a lot of work looking at exactly that, looking at uh, USDA price forecasts, uh, uh, accuracy, um, you know, and, and based on what I've read from them, there there, there really aren't any major forecast, none of the, none of the forecast series that, that we're using in the APAS model, the USDA series, uh, the, the, the FAPRI forecasts and the CBO forecasts. You know, I don't know if there's any any evidence out there that any of them are historically biased up or down away from away from the actual price i think they're all on average over time pretty good at, at any given time they they can be bad but yeah. you can't that's not the way to evaluate a, a forecast model is by looking at, at one one outcome you gotta look at how it does over time just because you know you're predicting the future so and the best probably the best predictor we can come up with is the futures price <laughs> um over overall we got the question, how does this compare to the Texas A&M model? Obviously, Illinois and we, their FSA contracted with two people, two groups, Texas yeah. A&M and ourselves. Um, we have a difference in approach, I guess. We're in, uh, And uh, I would be surprised, though, if you entered the same prices and yields into our two models, you would get dramatically different results. They are simulation models, so, yeah. the, so they're, they are going to vary a bit, but a, qualitatively, they should have roughly the same results. And, and, the, and, the, and the programs that were, that were you know, the, we're, we're not interpreting Art County any different than the Texas A&M mm -hmm. model. It, the, yeah. uh, the, the, the programs are the programs as they're written uh, in the FSA regulations. So, um, you know, both tools will, are, are going to be accurately modeling the programs. It's just that forecasting and, and that piece of looking at the future where um, there, there can be small differences that are that, that again are going to give you maybe differences in exact dollar amounts for predicted payments. But as Gary said, it'd be pretty surprising if there were uh, any large uh, qualitative differences between the two. Yeah, and it's and I mean, just not getting into any modeling discussion, which uh, it, it's tough to be able to compare just across the two. Um, uh, you're entering different aspects. You look at, at the APAS tool and the sample farms, and so, and and to build your own, you're going to enter different information. If and as Gary's comparison, as he discussed with the comparison tool, it doesn't take but just a few switches in prices and yield numbers, and you change payment expectations. And so, it is again. These are they are both trying to accomplish this this difficult task of of getting a sense of what's going to happen uh, over the next five years for the programs. And so. Uh, multiple resources and multiple ways of, of, of calculating or, or looking at them. Um, we are past our 9 o'clock time, and uh, we'll take uh, a quick couple of questions. Any restriction on a landlord with multiple form, farms in the same county with different tenants? Not quite sure what that's asking. Again, you make the, the, the decisions farm by farm. For the landlord, it, it matters what your lease is. If you're on a cash lease situation, then it's the tenant producer that are ma that's making the decision on the farms. And if you've got different tenants on different farms, they can certainly make uh, different decisions. If you're um, not in a cash lease situation, then as the landlord on those farms, you will make decisions farm by farm uh, along with your tenant producer. So I'm not sure if we answered that uh, completely. Uh, I'm not quite sure uh, uh, the question uh, specifically asking, except the fact that we always want to remember we're making farm by farm, FSA farm by FSA farm decisions, regardless of county. I mean, that, if there are FSA farms in the same county, 
um, you still make it farm by farm. And then we got uh, a, a throwback question, if you will, uh, back to the yield update decision. Um, if a landowner cash rents his land, but to the same tenant, can the landowner use the tenant's production history to update the yield history? And it, we got uh, nodding heads. We're all in agreement that, yes, that's the case. Uh, the, the yield history for that tenant on that farm uh, is what will be used to update the payment yields. It's also a great reminder that the payment yield decision is made by the landlord, uh, even in a cash lease situation, not the tenant. So, so these... <laughs> These are separate decisions in, in multiple ways, but certainly in who makes them. And so a great reminder that while the program choice that we talked about today is for the producers, that base reallocation, that payment yield update are the landlord's decisions. And in the case of payment yields, you would be using the yields for uh, that farm, uh, your tenant's yields in that case. And now I got a question on what if the tenant <coughs> changes uh, over the course of the next five years? Uh, or, or that, that was the question, but even if the landowner changes over the next uh, five years, according to the regulations, those decisions that are made this year, yield updating, base reallocation, and program election, uh, those are all going to stick with that farm, uh, even if the tenant changes, even if the landowner changes uh, uh, between now and, and 2018. Yeah, the, the statute, the regulations have all been very clear that you cannot change these decisions once that deadline passes, once they've been made. And so a change in ownership, a change in tenant will not change the program decision uh, for that farm. And I believe we have, uh, we've exhausted uh, everybody today. We appreciate your time. Uh, we, we appreciate you taking time to, to uh, be with us uh, here this morning as we uh, uh, dove a little bit further into the ARC County versus price loss coverage uh, decision. This webinar will be archived um, will be archived on the internet. Do we got one last well, question? There is a question on, on the APAS tool. If oh. you can save and save all your entries and, and return, uh, yes, you can do that in the build your own farm tool where you do have to enter in uh, uh, more data than in some of the other options. Um, if, that, if Jonathan wants to go that to that real quick, we could we could show that. Um, that by the way saves on your machine. Yeah, so yep. so if you but that that becomes important. Um, uh, that becomes important. Uh -huh. There we go. So if you go to the custom farm here option, um, you see there's a on the very front page there's a load farm file button. So if you go through the process of build your own farm, and, and that basically would be setting up all the information for, an, for a single FSA farm in your operation, once you get to the end, there will be some scenario analysis. And at some point in this webinar series, we'll go through the build your own farm thing uh, again. But um, you'll be able to save the farm file. That'll save it as a text file uh, on your computer, somewhere that you choose to save it on your computer so that there's no privacy uh, 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 concerns there. And then you could load that farm file back up here if you wanted to come back and look at some different scenarios. Right. And you can save. The nice thing about this is you can save multiple scenarios for that for that build your own farm and kind of keep a, a running list if you wanted to compare and go back to and, and bring them back up. Uh, but again, this is saved on your computer um, and, and you can load it back up. And, and we, will, we will go through that some more uh, in a future uh, webinar when we discuss the build your own farm. Um, with that, any concluding thoughts, uh, Gary or Nick? I think we've we've gotten quite a bit of info on the Art County PLC and, and, and sort of adding on to the the uh, hopefully wealth of resources and information that's out there to help understand these decisions and help sort through them. The one thing I would say, um, we will have a bit much more clearer understanding of at least 2014 payments as we get into February. So um, might want to wait to then to make that decision. Appreciate your time and have a good weekend. Yeah, thank you very much.